um, and people will start coming in in about 30 seconds. We have people joining now, so welcome everyone. Um, we're gonna give it a minute or so to allow everybody to join. Uh, we're so glad you're able to join us this evening for our virtual department session about computer science. Um, just to let everybody know, we are using the Zoom webinar format. So that means uh, you can hear and see us, but we cannot hear or see you. So if you have questions, definitely make sure you get those submitted at the bottom of your Zoom screen. There's a Q&A button that you can click. Um, but again, welcome everybody. We'll get started in just a couple seconds. I see a couple more people joining in. Um, but as I just said, um, we're using the Zoom webinar format for this evening's presentation. So that means you can hear and see us, but we cannot hear or see you. So if you do have questions, make sure you get those submitted in the Q&A portion of Zoom. It's a button at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we will definitely get those answered at the end. So feel free to submit those whenever you would like. So this isn't this show is not about me. It's about um, our professor and current students here. So I'm going to hand it over to them and they'll do introductions and dive into the presentation. Okay, great. Thanks, Tyler. So my name is Craig Wills. I'm the head of the computer science department here at WPI. Um, and I'm going to start off with a, a little bit of a presentation about the department, but I'll let the, I have two students that are helping me uh, this evening here and, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So Avery, why don't you go first? Hi, I'm a fourth year student completing a five year BS MS program uh, in computer science at the master's level. And then I'm doing computer science and math in the undergrad. I'm also part of the Scholarship for Service program, which is all about cybersecurity and taking that into the government workforce. Hi, everyone. I'm Molly. I'm currently a junior, and I'm studying computer science and data science. Excellent. OK, so um, I'll jump back in here, and, and we're going to go through some, uh, some, a presentation here about WPI computer science. Um, so WPI computer science has many aspects and I'm going to walk through some of those here. So at the undergraduate level at, at WPI, if you're interested in computer science, there's a number of options. Uh, so we have a computer science degree um, within that at the undergraduate level, you can have a concentration in cybersecurity. Um, interactive media and game development is another degree program that has a lot of computing, robotics, engineering. Uh, bioinformatics, and, and and as Molly said, so we have our newest undergraduate major major is data science. Um, you can minor in any of those. We have a BS MS program. Uh, if you go on and do an MS degree, certainly cybersecurity, we have more uh, that you can take there. Um, so computer science at WPI, um, as my slide indicates, is really the hub of WPI interdisciplinary programs. Um, so computer science faculty have worked with faculty in all of these departments around the, um, around the inner circle there to create interdisciplinary degree programs that I just talked about that these interdisciplinary degree programs are kind of in the intersections of what are kind of traditional um, uh, departments that we have. Um, so Certainly computer science has been involved in a number of these and are involved in a number of these. Uh, in fact, our, our one with robotics has been so successful that last year robotics has actually become its own department. Um, one of the great things about WPI undergraduate computer science is you have a lot of flexibility. Um, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what courses you take, what you do choose to do for projects. Um, one of the ways in which we have that flexibility is we don't have um, prerequisites for courses, but rather recommended backgrounds. So if you think you have the background for a course, um, you can go ahead and take it. You don't have to wave out of uh, prerequisites for courses. Uh, our courses go for seven weeks at a time. We call that a seven week term. In fact, literally today, um, is the last day of a term. So we gave, give A, B, C, D. We have four of these seven week terms each academic year. Um, we started at the end of August and today uh, was literally the last day of a term. So I'm thankful for Molly and Avery for sticking around here and, and helping out with this, uh, this evening here. Uh, we have lots of course offerings. So students are typically taking three courses at a time. Um, we do four of those seven week terms each academic year. So students are taking 12, the equivalent of 12 courses every academic year. So lots of 
options for students to take, um, lots of interesting options, so a few of our sample courses here. Uh, here's a diagram that I, I like uh, for lots of reasons. So uh, a pie chart that shows if you're a computer science major, how you're gonna spend your academic time at WPI. And so as you see, the largest slice of the pie here um, is computer science, okay? Um, and that, so, but it also kind of represents that the way we think about requirements. So we do not require specific courses, but rather we require typically numbers of courses. So as an example here, um, within computer science, there are only three requirements for a computer science major. Um, you need 15 computer science courses, okay? Of those 15 computer science courses, at least five have to be at the 4,000 or senior level. And you need one course out of each of four kind of areas, okay? Where typically those are at the 3,000 level. So for example, I literally have, have just finished teaching our 3,000 level operating systems course. Um, systems is one of those areas and probably the most common way in which students satisfy that, that systems bin is to complete the operating systems course. Um, but as you see, you're gonna take science engineering, you're gonna take math, you're gonna take a couple uh, of projects, something called an MQP and an IQP I'll talk about more, but certainly humanities and arts. There's great options for students to take humanities and arts at WPI. There's a lot of students involved in theater and music and, and students are completing requirements in that way. Um, to try to make it a little bit more concrete in terms of what you might do, you come to WPI in your first term, you say, hey, I think I'm interested in computer science. So what am I likely to take? Okay, so typically students will start off with our introduction to program design course. So this is a course that expects no background to uh, that you've had in computer science coming in. Um, most students will uh, start off taking math. So you might take the first Calc course. Uh, as I said, we have humanities and arts as a requirement. You might take an English course. We actually have a physical education requirement. So through the four years, you may start off and actually take a, a, a volleyball course. Um, you might come in as an intended computer science major and you've had you know, quite a better background. And in computer science, you've had opportunities there. So instead of taking our kind of regular pace course, you take our accelerated version. Uh, you may have had an opportunity to take some calculus before getting to WPI. So you start off and instead of Calc 1, you start off in Calc 3. We do have a first year project um, that you can take called the Great Problem Seminar. So you might choose to take that. Or you may come to WPI and ultimately be a computer science major and initially take no computer science. Uh, that's fine as well. We have students who transfer in. And uh, again, we have a very flexible curriculum. Uh, students can start taking the intro course the latter part of their first year. We have students who don't become computer science majors even into their sophomore year. So I think in terms of our course planning, we have a lot of flexibility. But if you follow kind of the flow of courses that fit together, if you want a very structured program, we, we, can, we can do that as well. Uh, I see a lot of students that exploit that flexibility for courses and projects that are a best fit for them. And students use that to pursue themes that they're particularly interested in, you know, software interface design, they're interested in application development, um, cybersecurity, data analysis, apply to domains such as health, that you can go ahead and there's flexibility in the courses and the projects to do things like that. So computer science is about people, certainly about students and faculty working together. So certainly through courses, through projects, um, students are involved in, uh, undergraduate students are involved in research at WPI and many work with uh, faculty doing undergraduate research, uh, academic advising. So at WPI, all courses are taught by WPI faculty. We do have graduate and senior teaching assistants that help out and assist with courses, but they're not in charge of it. Um, and it's also an opportunity, certainly at the undergraduate level for these teaching assistants for you to get involved. You come to WPI, you do well. 
it's an opportunity for you to take on one of these roles. These are paid positions, so it's a nice way for you to help out. And when you're a student, it's a nice way because particularly the undergraduate students have taken the same classes and can help, uh, are very good in terms of office hours and helping there. There are many computer science student organizations. In fact, I think I have a couple. So I know Avery is very involved with UPE. Molly, I think is right now in charge of the, our Association for Computing Machinery or ACM. Um, so each of, the, each of the student organizations kind of has a number of things that they focus on and, and interesting um, aspects that they, that they bring to the department. So projects are a big aspect and a big part of what we do at WPI. Um, all students have to do a couple of, of significant projects. So in your junior year, you have to do a project that looks at the interaction between society and technology in some way. Uh, in your senior year, you have to do a senior project that's in your, in your discipline, in your major, advised by a faculty member in your major. Um, we do use these projects, the senior projects, most of the senior projects are done on campus, but we have a couple of what we call project centers where uh, a student will do their entire project in one of our seven week terms. So one of the uh, locations is Wall Street. Um, we also send students out to, in, to Silicon Valley uh, and they do their project out there. We also have many other company sponsors in the kind of greater Boston area where WPI is at that, um, that sponsor projects. The great thing about projects is there is a wide variety. Um, so we have over 35 full-time faculty in computer science. So whatever your interest might be in computer science, we have faculty that have expertise and interest in advising it. Okay, uh, so computer science at WPI gives you certainly more breadth. So I talked about in your junior year, you have to do a project that looks at the interaction of society and technology. Uh, so here is a, a, a map of the world with pins showing where WPI has uh, what we call global project centers. So these are project centers where students go for a seven week term. Um, to do their junior year project. So you can think about these as kind of pop-up project centers where you have two faculty and say 25 students that will go to a site. Um, housing will have been arranged already. And during that time, the students will get up every day and they will go work with a project sponsors. Uh, the faculty, the WPI faculty um, sponsors or advisors will be there to kind of oversee and make sure everything is going well. But this is a phenomenal opportunity for students who are pursuing computer science or students that are pursuing uh, engineering to actually get off campus. And if you're, so if you're interested in computer science, um, and I certainly saw this with, with going to other schools with my own kids, this is, this is something that is truly distinctive, not only this project itself, but the fact that we're able to use it as a as a vehicle to get so many students off campus. The majority of WPI undergraduates do get off campus and we're even with the pandemic, we're getting back to more of these project centers are, are getting up and the students are, are actually going, going to them. So we have a number of research groups and labs within the department and, and more so just to kind of give you a flavor of the range of interest of faculty that we have. Uh, we are a center of excellence in cybersecurity uh, research. That's a designation from the Department of Homeland Security. Um, more CS research groups and labs that, that we're involved in. Um, so what do computer scientists do when you, know, you get your degree, you, you, you go out? So computer scientists impact society, okay? So here's a, here's a diagram that I put together few years ago. So in the, in the center, it shows kind of a core computer science here. So you see in the blue, and there's kind of a, a number of kind of traditional topics that um, as part of earning a computer science degree, you're certainly going to work theory and algorithms. And as I said, I just got done teaching a course in operating systems and software interfaces and design. These are all things as a, as a computer science major you're going to do. But 
increasingly around that kind of core computer science, there's a what I label on here as a computing ring where you have people from that are maybe not traditional computer scientists where computer science are working with them that have a whole number of fields. And some of these have, have turned into some of these interdisciplinary degrees here at WPI. Um, and then around that, that computing ring is really all aspects of society, okay? So computer scientists that, and, and students with degrees in computer science aren't just working for, you know, computing, what are obviously computing uh, based companies, but increasingly and, and now pretty much all companies are computing based. So healthcare and, and uh, you know, manufacturing and elder care, all sorts of things that our graduates are, are getting involved in. And, and certainly it's, it's really an opportunity as uh, going forward to really make an impact because that technical in education that you have and that strong technical degree allows you to, to work with people in so many, so many areas. Um, just uh, some examples of where computer scientists and kind of problems. So uh, utility and health systems. So home water usage, computer scientists working with, you know, how can we make better use of, of water? Here's a picture of a needle nail care unit of, you know, we have signals that monitoring this very tiny baby here and, and computer scientists helping, helping doctors look for signal in that, in that noise that is, is being monitored. Uh, and here's a graph that is a, a show at the top here, social networking. So uh, the nodes could be people, that could be you there in the center, um, the connectivity between the nodes, it could be friends or, or things like that. Um, so this is both a social network, but to a computer scientist, this is a graph with nodes and edges and, and it's a data structure that we work with all the time. Okay, and so finally, so what are you going to do with your degree? So in, in, in last year, which is the last year we have data right now, uh, if you have a bachelor's degree in computer science uh, from WPI, our students reported a starting salary of over $88,000. Um, one of the ranking services last year ranked this as one of the very best uh, programs in all of the United States, ranked WPI computer science. Um, and as Avery said earlier, student, if you're interested in cybersecurity, and so we both have that you courses and projects that you can pursue, but we also have a, an NSF supported grant that, that Avery is involved with where you can actually get um, support to go to school that starts as early as your junior year. Um, and that pays both tuition and also uh, gives you a stipend. So that's a, a phenomenal opportunity that we have gotten NSF and we just recently got renewed to have NSF funding for that. Um, and so that is that is a great opportunity. The only thing it comes with is you for every year you're supported, you're going to go take a government related cybersecurity job. But that's that's great involvement and great training that our students get. Uh, finally, you know, where do our students go when they're done? We have students at all of these great companies. As I said, we have, uh, you know, also students going at, at to more diverse places. So a whole variety of options. And if you wanna see, I encourage you to go and, and, and look at our career development site and uh, you can see that. Uh, and so I'll just finish up. And, and so here's a picture of our brand new um, academic building. I can say, so this building is due to open uh, in January. Um, so when you say come in the fall, it will already have been open. I literally was in this building last week uh, it's a beautiful building inside. It's very uh, airy, a lot of natural light. Um, and so there's classrooms, there's student services, some of the computer science faculty and, and programs are gonna be over there. So uh, a great opportunity. So with that, I will kind of leave it there. Actually, I'll stop sharing and we will open it up for questions. Perfect, so thanks professor for that um, presentation. If any of the attendees tonight have questions for any of the current students about anything that they do or are involved in or what it's like being a student or for the professor, definitely get those submitted now um, so we can start to get those answered. Um, we'll see, hopefully, 
people have questions out there. Let's see what we got. The one that, the one thing I will say, and, and Tyler, I see that you answered the question about access to this presentation. The the, the one thing that I will say um, is if you there is much more information if you go to the computer science department um, website and you scroll down a bit, there is actually a uh, a link there for information for pers prospective students that not only has a a, a similar presentation, not exactly this one, but a similar presentation is this one, but it also has links to much other information. I mentioned like a, a link to the Career Development Center so that that's a, um, that they have a wealth of information of, of, you know, where our students go, placement rates and, and things like that. Perfect. So we got a question. This might be a good one for Students to answer, but also you, professor. Someone's asking what makes WPI's computer science program unique from other schools that offer computer science. Molly, you want to you want to take a crack? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so this is kind of going off what you were saying earlier, professor, about um, like how you don't need like there, there's, there, aren't, there aren't requirements for certain classes. So you can kind of just like take what interests you. And after you um, after you take a course from each of those different areas that is a requirement, you can kind of just like do whatever you want and find what interests you, which I think is um, really enjoyable. I like being able to choose what interests me as opposed to having to take certain classes. Avery. For me, it was the project learning style. Um, I learned very much, my learning style is very much learning by doing. So having pretty much at the start, we'd have a, a project every single week. And then as I kind of got taking more difficult classes, more higher level classes, those projects would instead of being once every week, it'd be a bigger project that would go further and further and further until you have one project you do over seven weeks that you can really feel proud of after the end of it. You get a lot done. You know, maybe, maybe you'll develop a web app, like create an application, Maybe it'll create a mobile app with for mobile and ubiquitous computing, which I'm not in, but I know other people who are in it right now. So I, I, I would say both, and, and I would, for, for students that are thinking about colleges and, you know, what are you thinking about? I'd say for, for our computer science degree program itself is, is the flexibility and the fact that they, you know, the projects and that you get to do a, a, a meaningful senior project that's of interest to you. Um, and I think then the other advantage of doing our computer science department is, is degree is it's at WPI. And that means the other kind of degree requirements that all WPI students have to have, that you do have to do humanities and arts, that you do have to use do this junior project looking at the interaction of society and technology. I think that, that that's what makes it a, a truly phenomenal degree um, that you get both of those both of those aspects. Um, okay, perfect. Um, and then a couple other questions. What programming languages do you use in courses? <laughs> I'll let you, I'll let you guys answer that one. Okay, um, I can start, I guess. So for the intro course, um, you use Racket, which is a language that most people don't know about, but it kind of puts everyone like on the same playing field as a starting point, which is kind of nice. Um, after that, um, from what I've taken, it's mostly been Java, which I really enjoy using. So we did that for object-oriented programming. Um, I also use that for software engineering. And then for, for the system courses, um, it's more, since it's more low level, we did like C and C++. We also, um, one of the courses I took, I learned assembly. So that was also really fun. If you're looking more towards the data science side or mathematics, you'll typically see MATLAB, Python, and R as the three big languages used for those scientific computing, uh, scientific scientific computing languages. Yeah, and, and 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 I'll just say so. Certainly, certainly a variety. Um, you know, and then as faculty member who just finished teaching or is finishing teaching operating systems, I literally have a pile of exams to grade. Um, the students were programming in either C or C++. Um, another question is about robotics and WPI's computer science program. Um, so computer, so robotics is not required for computer science. Um, 
students actually can take up to a couple of robotics engineering courses and count them towards the science and engineering uh, requirement that we have. So again, there's there's flexibility there. Um, and then someone's asking about explaining how co-ops and internship opportunities and just how they generally fit in a student's academic year. Avery, Molly, maybe you guys can talk about that. Yeah, so we have a, a career fair that comes by every, uh, it happens at the, I'm forgetting the day, it happened this term. So it happens every fall, we have a career fair with the CDC where they bring in a bunch of companies and you'll typically go there looking for summer internships or full-time work if you're a senior. Um, the CDC also does have a program where they ask you if you want to do a co-op and they really wanna match people up with co-ops, but most students don't go the co-op route because you have to take a term or maybe a semester off that usually happens during the year. So I don't see a lot of co-ops happen, but I know that the CDC will help you if you're interested in that. Typically what we see is summer internships. So I did that last year. I worked at the Department of Defense over the summer. And that's kind of around the time is junior year summer is typically when most students will get their first internship. Yeah, uh, I guess I kind of have the same feeling about that. Um, for me, I'm like only looking for internships for over the summer. Um, I also had an internship this past summer so that was good to like get that experience and be able to use what I learned in my classes and um, like actual real work in the out in the world. So that was nice. Good. Perfect. Let's see. Are there any other questions out there that any of the students, the professor can answer? So what does Worcester offer to CS students? That's a good question. I don't know if anybody wants to take a stab at that one, if there's anything specific tied with Worcester and CS. Why don't you, why don't you just talk about being a student in, in, at WPI and, and in, in Worcester, maybe? I will say Worcester, occasionally there's a, like, are you, I, I'm kind of wondering like what the question is, is like there are opportunities in Worcester or is it more like, what's it like being a student in Worcester? In terms of opportunities, I think mostly around here there's, I think the biggest company is AbbVie, which is not typically a computer science, it's usually biomed, but they have some computer science openings. Um, I think the closest, closest ones are for computer science more get towards Natick and uh, I can't remember the name of the city, but there's a few more that are around such as uh, Comscope and I uh, can't remember the name, MathWorks is also around here, which are close, but not quite. Um, as being a student in Worcester, um, I mean, I live right, I, I'm in my apartment right now, which is right across the street from WPI. So I'm in an off-campus apartment, but I'm right here at WPI. So that's kind of how it is being in Worcester. Um, next question is, how often are computer science students able to work with students in other majors, such as aerospace engineering? Um, I would say as much as you want. It's not unusual for senior projects to involve uh, students from multiple majors, okay? Um, it's also possible that, you know, a, a particular, so one of the things, if you want to double major, let's see, I heard Molly, that you're a double major. Uh, Avery, are you double major? And you're, uh, so in each case, Avery and Molly will both do a slightly bigger senior project um, that will sit somewhere between their, or they, they have the option of doing a slightly bigger project that sits at the intersection between their two majors so that they can essentially double major a, a, a bit easier than if they had to do two separate senior projects. Perfect. All right, anybody else? Oh, another one. Question for the students. Did you enter WPI knowing exactly which area of CS you wanted to study, or did it take other CS courses before deciding on one in particular? If so, which courses, clubs, opportunities helped you decide? It's a good question. Yeah, I can start with that. Um, so yeah, when I went to WPI, like going in, um, I didn't really know like what computer science was. So like looking at the flow chart and all the different areas, like I, I didn't really know how to um, di differentiate like what 
the class titles meant or anything like that. It was kind of, I, I thought it was kind of confusing, but um, for me personally, I found, so what, what one of the areas is um, design. And I found that one to be like what I like the most. And I think that I, after taking software engineering, I mostly realized that because that's a class where you work on a big team project and you're creating an application from start to finish, which I think is really valuable. Um, and then some other classes that would like fall under that category of design are like um, databases or like um, there's like an object oriented analysis and design. And um, I just finished taking databases. I'm taking the other class next term. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, I would say that taking software engineering kind of like, um, like made me interested in that area of computer science. I would agree. I came in not knowing anything about computer science. I just thought it was something used to make video games. And then I came in here and I was like, wait, you can do other stuff with it. So I got very interested in the math side of computer science. And I looked very much at like theoretical computer science. So the analysis of algorithms and computational complexity. But then kind of in junior, my junior year, I looked at this scholarship for service program. And I, I, went, to, I went to a few uh, cybersecurity club meetings. I really like the people in it. I really like the topic of cybersecurity. So I swapped later from theoretical computing to very low level computing. So I work now with very much, you know, assembly language, security, and all that. So I that's where I've settled. I like I like what I do now with cybersecurity, but it took me a while to get there. Perfect. Um, and then to your double majors, are you able to fit that within four years or five? If four, did you have to overload each term or do a summer course in order to fit all the classes you need to graduate in four years? Um, so for me, I did overload one term. And then I also did take a class over the summer one time, but I don't think it was actually necessary for me to do that. Because I, I think it was because I was originally going to do a double major and a minor. So that's why I would have had to overload a few times. Um, but I don't think I would have had to do that necessarily. Um, I was just kind of like preparing in advance. And um, in terms of, um, what was I gonna say? So for, I forgot what I was gonna say. So yeah, I guess that's all I have, sorry. Uh, if you come in with AP credits, that significantly helps. So I came in with three AP credits and then I also did overload a bit. And so I can complete the double major in four years. I know that some people are very ambitious and they can actually complete a single major in three years. So it is possible without overloading if you have AP credits, but it is kind of tricky. You'd have to like very, you have to plan it out a little bit. Okay, yeah. And going off of that, um, what, what I was gonna say is that I start for from the math requirement. I started in Calc 4, so that also kind of like, um, like made me a little bit ahead of some other students and also made it easier to fit everything. And I also took a few AP classes so that helped as well. Perfect. Yeah, I, I think, oh, and, sorry, and I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just chime in and say that I, I mean, my observation is that if you, if you come in with some credits that, that extra credit students typically use those in maybe one of three ways. They, as Avery said, you may be able to get out in less than four years you may be able to do a double major within four years, or you do like a, both a bachelor's and a master's degree in a reduced amount of time. Maybe you can do both degrees in say four and a half years. So. Perfect, another question for Molly and Avery. How do you find the workload of WPI's unique seven week term structure? How often do classes meet per week? Yeah, uh, I can start. So classes either meet um, like every day except for Wednesday or they meet two times. So that'd be like in, like f 50 minutes for four days, four days a week or um, like an hour and 50 minutes two times a week. Um, I feel like most of the early CS courses that you would take are like the everyday courses and then maybe you'll have like a lab or like a discussion class or something like that, which would be on a Wednesday or maybe just like a different day during the week, like Tuesday or Thursday. Um, but then some of like the higher level courses, like in the 3,000s three, three and 4,000s, those, a lot of those are twice a week for the hour and 50 minutes. 
If you're looking at the grad level, grad courses will typically also meet only one day a week, but they'll meet for three hours. Or they might meet for two days at one and a half hours each. So um, that's just grad level, which I know you're probably not thinking that now, but maybe it's helpful information to add. Um, in terms of the workload, I would say that uh, one course takes about 10 to 15 hours. We have this uh, online website called oscar.wpi.edu, which you can see what it, it, when we complete a course, um, all students will submit anonymous feedback to that course. And one of the things is what was their workload? So we, we can all look, go to that website, oscar.wpi.edu. Um, you will not be able to go to it, unfortunately, because it's only WPI students can see it. But we can see kind of what the workload will be for a prospective course, what, people, what students say that they think the workload is. Perfect. A couple more questions coming in. Is there a difference between summer internships and co-ops? So, uh, and so I, I think that I think the summer internships are only during the summer, typically, and and we do have co-op opportunities at WPI and WPI Computer Science. Usually, a co-op means that a student is away from campus during, say, one semester of the academic year. Um, my observation is that most computer science students at WPI do not pursue. Um, co-ops, one, not that co-ops are bad, but they simply feel they get enough industry experience either between summer internships uh, and projects. Um, and that, you know, if you do a co-op, um, it just takes that much longer for you to go ahead and get your degree. So we certainly have those opportunities, but but again, as, as department head in computer science, my, my observation is probably most students focus on summer internships, just to make that clear when computer science get students get summer internships, they are definitely paid positions. Um, and so that's good opportunities there. Perfect, and then another question, what CS classes would you be taking if you entered WPI with scoring on the AP Computer Science A and completing Computer Science 3? I guess I'm assuming that taking computer science three while they're in high school still. Sure. I would say, so my, my advice to students who have had a lot of background um, in general. So when I showed the list of courses that we have, so we have our regular pace introductory course that that course expects no computer science background coming in. Okay. Um, for students who do have more background and can pick things up, uh, pretty quickly, one of the things we've introduced that we have accelerated versions of the first couple computer science courses that most students take. And, and I often would urge students to go ahead and take those more accelerated courses. One, it, it's, it's an opportunity to see more topics than the regular pace course. And it also kind of gives you a chance to get a sense about where background prior to WPI, where, how that, how you are, um, at WPI. The, the other good thing that we do um, for the first accelerated uh, course, um, we have a accelerated and a regular pace versions that are offered at the same time. Every year students realize, ooh, maybe the accelerated version is, is, is really a little too accelerated um, and you're able to drop back into the regular pace course, okay? Perfect. Um, and then what sort of programs and projects do the game development courses focus on? Uh, a whole variety. I, I, I mean, I would, and, and I don't know whether Avery or Molly have a whole lot of insight here. I, I mean, I can't, I can't really give a lot of specifics. Look, we have a whole degree program there. Um, the technical side of the IMGD program, the students take about two thirds of the number of computer science courses that a CS major would take, but then they have a number of uh, technical um, game development courses. Um, but I would certainly urge you and, and Tyler could help you out there maybe offline uh, with a specific session for the interactive media and game development program. Yeah, so we do have um, IMGD is what it is for short, Interactive Media and Game Development. If you go to, I'll put it in the chat, but it's wpi.edu slash plus visit. 
you will see um, a schedule of our future events and IMGD does have a couple. Um, so you can check those out there. Um, and someone's asking, would you still recommend the accelerated courses with transfer credits? Uh, not, nece not necessarily. If we have students that are transferring to WPI and then they have other credits, in some cases, we're seeing that and saying, okay, you've had some introductory computer college level computer science credits. We're, we're more likely just to build off of that and maybe direct you to kind of uh, fitting into some of our 2000 or sophomore level courses that would be a, a good fit. Perfect. So um, we're coming up towards the end. I don't know if there's any one last question or if the professor and the students just want to give like one piece of advice before we sign off here, that might be a nice way to, to button this up. Hmm. I think, so I, I guess I'll go first. I, I think the one thing I also didn't say and, you know, and kind of, you know, and, and what you want to think about out there that you're thinking about, okay, where do I want, I, I think I'm interested in computer science. I assume that's why you're here at this session. Why should I go to WPI? I, you know, you can go to any school you want, any kind of school you want and study computer science. You can go to a, a small liberal arts school. You can go to a big state university. Uh, you can go to a science engineering focused place like WPI. And what I would say, you it's, it's kind of core computer science at any one of those places is going to be the same. Every place you go, you're going to get algorithms. Uh, you're probably going to, and, and things like that. But I think one thing that you get at being at a place like WPI is you get lots of flexibility. You get lots of choices in terms of courses and projects. And then the other thing I'll say is also think about what are the kind of kids that you wanna have around you, okay? Again, at students at WPI, my observation, a lot of you know interested in, in, in science and, and math and, and that kind of stuff. And to, so those are the kind of kids that are gonna be around you and the kind of students around you here. And, and while we as faculty think that we're important and we, I guess we, you know, we nominally set the pace of what is done. My observation is both socially and even academic students get as much from each other. And I think that that is the, the best part of WPI is, is the WPI students helping each other out. And, and I think you, you just wanna think about, okay, what other kind of students do I have, wanna have around me as I look at, look at various choices that I have? Yeah, I guess I can add something going off to that as like a piece of advice. Um, I would say like, don't be afraid to ask for help because there, there are like a lot of resources on campus. Um, there are always like student assistants or teaching assistants for CS courses um, who are really helpful if you just go to their office hours. Also professors are often holding office hours too and they can um, provide a great resource as well. So like asking questions like is never bad. Like if you need help, ask for it. And um, like, it can help you like move forward in the right direction and give you a clear idea of what you need to do and whatever assignment you're working on or how you should um, like improve, like um, like how you study or anything like that um, so that you can be successful in your courses. My piece of advice would be that since you're all here, you're interested in computer science. So I would recommend all of you to take the accelerated courses. Even if you're kind of saying, oh, I don't have the background, well, a lot of the people going into those accelerated courses also don't. I had no computer science background before college. I went into the accelerated one. It was a lot of hard work, but it was super rewarding. Professor Beck, who teaches it, is an amazing professor. And if you really want to know if computer science is for you, you'll find out really quickly because Professor Beck does an amazing job of sparking your interest in computer science if it is something that you want to do. So I recommend everyone to at least sign up for the accelerated one. And of course, if you find it's not for you, you can always drop down to the 1101. Perfect. I think those are great pieces of advice to end this on. I also posted in the chat um, that link for students to check out our future department specific sessions. So I'd highly recommend you check that all out. But I want to thank our professor and two current students for joining us um, this evening. Um, and thank you everybody for signing in and, and hearing from them. And we're looking forward to hopefully having you on campus sometime soon. All right. Stay hey. safe out there, everyone.
Thank you. Bye.